after being ridiculously inverted for over a year, is the yield curve about to uninvert? And if it does, what would that even mean? To answer those questions, we're going to have to really go over the current market environment. And sadly, that means we have to start with the Federal Reserve. As you might know, the FOMC met just yesterday and decided to continue pausing on the rate hikes. And the reason we have to pay attention to the Fed, at least to a certain extent, is because those interest rate policies do influence the short end of the yield curve, short-term interest rates. That doesn't mean we have to focus exclusively on the Fed, nor do we have to filter all of our analysis interpretation strictly through the lens of Jay Powell's eyes. Instead, we can realize, this is what inversion means, that markets do factor independent ideas that don't necessarily correspond and relate to what the Federal Reserve is doing, seeing, or thinking about doing. Now, what Jay Powell said yesterday at his press conference was that, of course, the Fed is pausing, but he gave a couple reasons why, which suggest, like the marketplace, he's beginning to become a little bit less constructive on what rate hikes could potentially do. Here's what he said. The question we're asking is, should we hike more? Slowing down on hiking, he means, is giving us, I think, a better sense of how much more we need to do if we need to do more. And when he says need to do more, he's talking, of course, about his ideas of inflation. And what are his ideas of inflation? Well, Powell continues. We are attentive to recent data showing the resilience of economic growth and demand for labor. Evidence of growth persistently above potential or that tightness in the labor market is no longer easing could put further progress on inflation at risk and could warrant further tightening of monetary policy. So again, the Phillips curve. They're focusing on the labor market because they believe that's where inflation comes from, even though there's no correlation whatsoever in reality. But again, when we're trying to factor what the yield curve is doing and what it's telling us, we have to start with even these non-economic and ridiculous economic mistakes. But he also continued talking specifically about interest rates. And this is where we really need to be careful. What Powell said was, Financial conditions have tightened significantly in recent months, driven by higher longer-term bond yields, among other factors. Because persistent changes in financial conditions can have implications for the path of monetary policy, we monitor financial developments closely. And this is the thing. This is why it's so hard to get people to understand what interest rates and yield curves and things like that are telling us, because Federal Reserve officials and economists have it all backwards. They tell you that rising long-term interest rates are somehow tightening. So when we see the market curves behave where long-term rates are rising, we're supposed to believe, as Powell would like us to, that that somehow equates to tightening and maybe that means recession. It's no wonder people are confused. But there is some good news here. And part of the good news is that maybe the, the Federal Reserve will stop confusing people by no longer hiking interest rates. Powell did say one more thing that we have to pay attention to. He said about the dots, the Federal Reserve's infamous dots. That's not like a plan that anybody's agreed to or that we will do. I think the efficacy of the dot plot probably decays over the three month period between that meeting and the next meeting. But that's not gonna stop us from interpreting yield curve signals and trying to figure out what it's telling us about the macroeconomic situation, the monetary situation, even where interest rates are likely to go from here now that the Federal Reserve is, at least, at least it seems to be, most likely done with its rate hikes. We have basically two different types of scenarios about where we can go from here in terms of the yield curve and what the yield curve behavior in those two scenarios tells us about macroeconomic conditions as well as monetary conditions, the potential for financial volatility and all of that. But there are three scenarios within those two different categories of scenarios. The first category is what we call bear steepening. And it's this language in the jargon gets confusing. And the bear steepening refers to what that means for holding U.S. treasuries. And bear steepening is where interest rates in general tend to rise, but they rise much farther and much faster at the long end of the yield curve. So that's bearish for anyone holding especially long-term treasuries. But this category starts out being bullish for the world because think about what happens in a bear steepening case. That's what we'll talk about in just a minute. The, the second part of that though, is if the bear steepening goes too far, and too far is an imprecise term, I understand, but if the bear steepening were to continue and then go even further, 
That wouldn't be bullish for the world. That would be bearish for the world in a different way. That would be the inflation the Federal Reserve is constantly on guard over, at least in its Phillips curve labor market tightening type of fashion. A bear steepening case that goes from modestly bear steepening to holy crap bear steepening, that would be the signal for inflation getting out of control. Genuine inflation, not supply shock stuff. The second category and the third scenario for uninverting the yield curve, that is the bull steepening case. Now that's again, bullish for those holding US treasuries, bearish for the world because when it's bullish for US treasuries, that usually means nothing good is happening in the world. So we have the potential for bear steepening as a way to uninvert the yield curve. And on the other side, we have the potential for bull steepening as a way to uninvert the yield curve. When we scour the marketplace for clues about which way we're heading, which direction we're heading, we often wanna start with some of the esoteric signals like interest rate swap spreads. So whereas swap spreads might agree with Jay Powell about the fact that the Fed is likely done hiking rates, swap spreads here are sending a very different signal about what the potential monetary as well as economic and really dealer money collateral fundamentals are that are not likely being picked up by the Federal Reserve. Now, I, I hate to do this to you, but we're not gonna go over the swap spread part in this video here. I'm not gonna go over the chart. I'm just gonna leave it here as a cliffhanger. Just briefly mentioning this is something that I went over in our deep dive analysis just yesterday. That's a Eurodollar University subscription, shameless plug here. Information at eurodollar.university at our website. That's the kind of stuff we do in the deep dive analysis. And while I'm not gonna put it, we're not gonna go over interest rate swap spreads here in this video. I do wanna bring it up because I want you to keep this in mind for those who are familiar with swap spreads and what they mean. I did a video on them just recently. And we're probably gonna come back to interest rate swap spreads too because they are an important part of not just the yield curve dynamics, but everything else that we wanna know about the system itself. Keep interest rate swap spreads, especially how they're becoming more and more negative in mind as we go through some of these uninversion scenarios and cases. Now we've already seen one uninversion, potential uninversion case already, and that was the bull steepener. We got a glimpse of the bull steepener case in the early part of this year, the banking crisis, March, April, and the early part of May. What we had before then, of course, was a ridiculous level of inversion that started last September, October, and really November into the latter part of, of last year. So the yield curve had been massively inverted, and then along comes Silicon Valley Bank, and then uh, Signature Bank and Credit Suisse a couple weeks later. What happened to the yield curve? Well, it started to uninvert, but it uninverted in the bull steepener way, which meant that short-term rates were falling, long-term rates were falling, but short-term rates were falling faster than longer-term rates. When I mean short-term rates, we're gonna focus here on the two-year, not necessarily treasury bills. Those will come along later in scenarios and cases where this bull steepening actually goes further. But the initial stage of uninversion, this bull steepening, we see short-term note rates like the two-year treasury, those begin to drop and they drop farther and faster than those in the longer. So the curve itself is going down, but it's going down more at the front end than it is the back end. That's the bull steepening case, which is bearish for the world because it signals heavy demand for safe and liquid investments. And when safety and liquidity are in high demand, there's nothing good for anybody but own those who are owning safety and liquidity. So it's bullish for bonds, bearish for the world. And we see this in all of the numbers right away in March of 2023. The two-year, 10-year spread, that had been 107 basis points on March 8th. That collapsed all the way to just 38 basis points inverted on March 23rd. That was just after Credit Suisse. So a huge 60, 70 point swing in uninversion. Uh, the five-year, 10-year spread, which is a key middle part of the curve, which you should always watch, that had been minus 36 basis points inverted on March 8th. That got down to almost completely uninverting on March 23rd, and it would actually uninvert in the early by the early part of May. So this bull steepening uninversion meant nothing good because this was associated with heavy degrees of hedging with the banking crisis. It was associated with 
uh, massive amounts of uncertainty, economic potential, recession, all of that negative stuff. And you can see that in the nominal rates too. The two-year treasury, that dropped 130 basis points after March, uh, between March 8th and March 23. 130 basis points, that's how much the two-year fell. While the five-year dropped about 90 basis points and the 10-year fell about 60. So the curve, it just, it reshaped itself. And in many cases, in many parts, it was almost uninverted. So the bull steepener on inversion case, that's nothing good. That's recession. That's banking crisis and potential deflationary consequences. That's something we don't want to see. But that bull steepening, the, the fears over the, the spillover and the fallout from the banking crisis, that kind of shifted. It shifted a lot as I've been talking about focusing on the two-year treasury note yield around the middle part of May, early to middle part of May into July. What happened is the curve re-inverted again because the, there was no, it didn't seem like there was immediate, uh, immediate problems from all of the banking crisis. The credit crunch, the recession didn't show up right away. The disinflationary rebound that I've been talking about a lot lately, that happened in this part of the, uh, the calendar, this part of this year too. And so all of the fears that were piling into the bull steepener case in the yield curve during the banking crisis, those started to come off May into June and early part of July. But when we look at the yield curve now, really from the perspective of September, what we see is the curve looked like it was going to uninvert, especially the two-year, 10-year spread, got down to about a dozen basis points just recently. And the two-year, 10-year spread uninverting this direction is actually the bear steepening, or it would be the bear steepening if we believe that's why the long-term interest rates were rising. Before we get to that, though, the bear steepening is the opposite of the bull steepening. It's bearish for owning bonds. And in this context, where long-term rates were rising faster than short-term rates, in fact, short-term rates weren't moving at all, which is important, in this, as I'll get to in a second, long-term rates were going up, which meant, you know, with short-term rates up here and long-term rates going up, they came close to uninverting. And had it continued, what that would have meant is soft landing not recession, uninversion in this direction would have meant the market saying, oh yes, we're more constructive on the economic fundamentals. We're less, less fearing the potential for banking crisis, credit crunch, and everything else. We see more growth and in inflation expectations in the longer run, uh, longer run period. Therefore, longer term rates end up rising more than short term rates are. This type of uninversion would be agreeing with Jay Powell if it was being done for fundamental reasons. But again, it's not hard to see why people get so confused because Powell says longer term rates go up, that's tightening and tightening can lead to recession. Therefore, longer term rates go up. And if the yield curve is uninverted because long term rates are going up, wouldn't that be recession? No, it wouldn't. This scenario where longer term rates are rising relative to short term rates, faster and farther than relative to short term rates, that would be the soft landing. And as I said before, if it went even further, where longer term rates really got out of control, that would be the inflation signal that the Federal Reserve is dreading. It's the opposite case as we saw in March, April, and early part of May, the bull steepening, that's recession, that's banking crisis, and that's deflation. Again, the Fed and economics, they've done such a horrible job educating people on how interest rates behave. And there's a whole other topic about why that is because basically the Fed needs you to believe that hiking rates is actually tightening because they don't actually do money here. So just a re quick recap before we think about where things are going. Bull steepener, that's rates going down. Long-term rates going down faster, bullish for bonds, bearish for the economy. That's the recession signal. Bear steepener, which is the yield curve uninverting because long-term rates go up and then they go up farther than where, go up past where short-term rates are. That would actually be bullish for the economy, but bearish for bonds. So the bear steepener on inversion, bullish for the economy, unless it goes too far in the other direction. That would be the soft landing. So the question now is because interest rates were rising through September and it looked like we were going to get the bear steepener, the bear uninversion in bonds bullish for the economy. Did that mean that the, the, the yield curve was saying, 
forget about the recession, all the stuff we were afraid of earlier in the year. We're, right, we're, we're, we're on board with Jay Powell. We're into the soft landing scenario. And we would believe that if it wasn't for the fact that this happened during the month of September, actually August, September, and part of October. September, the September effect, which is something I continue to talk about all the time because it happens every September. And the same problem happens every September, including last September, where we interpret these signals maybe a little bit too fundamentally when they're actually for non-economic reasons. So interest rates were rising, not because the market was saying, we agree with Jay Powell and soft landing. Interest rates were rising because of the September effect. And now that the September effect looks like it's wearing off and it looks more and more to be the case, what are rates doing? They're going back toward the bull steepening case, case, bearish for the global economy, bearish for the monetary system, again, interest rate swap spreads, bearish for practically everything except for those who are buying U.S. treasuries like Stan Druckenmiller or Bill Ackman and Bill Gross, these former bond bears who are now quite interested in owning safe and liquid investments. So if the yield curve does eventually uninvert in this direction, it'll actually get more inverted first before it uninverts. That will give us the signal recession, potential monetary problems, deflation, all of the bad stuff that we saw just a glimpse of earlier in the year. And when you look around the fundamentals of the bond market, as well as the economy has been doing lately, more and more it backs up the bull steepener case, which is bearish for the world. We see the economy rolling over. We see all of these signals in the monetary system suggesting massive amounts of distress, including swap spreads. And so the problem that we have, well, we have a couple problems. Those are economics, which can tell us the wrong thing about interest rates. And then we have the September effect, moving interest rates in a direction that seemed friendly to Jay Powell's case. Not the interest rates going up for tightening reason, but interest rates going up because they agree with Powell that the soft landing scenario is in play. Okay, so let's recap all of this interest rate stuff. Now that we have a handle on what yield curves mean and what the various moves in the curves actually mean, as I said, we have two different categories of potential cases and three different scenarios to consider moving forward. The Fed is done, rate hikes are over, fine, whatever. The first one, this is part of the bear steepening case, the uninversion that continues in this direction. If long-term rates go higher from here, they get past the September effect and they turn around and go back higher again, then that would signal soft landing. That would be great. That's what we want to see. We want long-term rates to go up, not because they tighten anything, because that would be the market agreeing there's a soft landing out there. The second scenario is if the curve uninverts in that same direction, but goes even further where rates really get up there, that's not a good sign. That means the inflation that everybody's been talking about, that's actually happening. And that's why it's such a low probability because we're not actually seeing any inflation. But that's a potential possibility. If the, yield un if the yield curve uninverts in that direction, it's either good soft landing or if it goes too far, inflation. The third scenario, the second category, that's the bull steepener case where we get more inversion before it uninverts. And the uninversion is where short-term rates go down faster than long-term rates do, like they started to do in the, in the early part of this year during the banking crisis. That's the third possibility. And more and more, especially as we get away from September, that seems to be what the markets are back to pricing. But when you combine the macro and money risks, that gives you the bull steepener case. That's, the, that's rates going down at the short end faster than the long end. And what have rates been doing recently? They've been sinking. Now, maybe that's a short-term fluctuation, but again, I think the fundamentals argue and have argued really since the summertime for that direction. Yes, the fundamentals of interest rate swaps. I just did a video recently on that. That's the one that's linked below me. I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University subscribers, especially DDA subscribers, and our Eurodollar University members, some of whom you see next to me here. Till next time, take care.